Welcome back to my channel, guys. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day wherever you may be. Today's video is going to be about the finale of the Keeping Up with the Kardashians scandal. And of course, I am talking about Jordan Woods, Tristan Thompson, and Khloe Kardashian. Now, I am not one of the channels that is going to go from start to finish of what happened in the episode. What I want to do is just highlight the situations that I saw that I felt was just very, again, manipulative. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. The Kardashians are good at what they do. Now, the first form of manipulation that I want to talk about is the whole situation when they were on their girls trip sitting at the table and out of nowhere, Khloe Kardashian pulls out her phone and shows everyone a video of the singer Sia crying and really just kind of showing the love and compassion that she had for Khloe Kardashian when all of this was going down. They talk about Kimora Lee Simmons and have her on the phone kind of riling them up, getting the energy kind of at an aggressive point, talking about you guys are looking weak and you guys need to lay down the law and whoop de whoop I mean, basically just showing the fact that she was, again, on the Kardashian side. I just didn't understand why they needed this celebrity validation. I didn't understand it. I didn't care for it. And for some reason, it was almost as if that was what made Chloe decide that she was then angry. It was after Kamora Lee Simmons approved of it? random now another thing is when they cut into the break and they're showing a little snippet of what is to come at further in the episode which is when kylie was talking to kim kardashian and basically crying about the whole jordan situation and how she felt when she saw jordan and even stating the words quote we can't bully people like this because at the end of the day these are people that are living a completely different lives than us so for kylie to kind of step back and realize that this is not the way it should be going down regardless of who it is was something I really did enjoy. Now when Chloe was drunk so basically her and Malika take out the time to call Tristan's friend who then gets on the phone says that, she, that he just ran downstairs you know so he can talk to them and I just thought that right there is already scared. I just feel like that would not be somebody I would want in my house but let me digress. Now in the last episode Tristan does talk about how he was suicidal over the situation how he was torn over it and Chloe was showing really no emotion other than is everything okay how can I help really showing concern but drunk Chloe aka Clo Money was screaming saying Tristan if you can hear this you and I just felt like that was really unnecessary again with the unnecessary things because one this is somebody who just said I don't know if it was a couple days ago a week ago hours I have no idea that they were down and they were suicidal and then the second point is the friend is now telling you that I am here at this house at this location due to the fact that this person that is my friend Tristan Thompson is very down right now but you felt that that was something you didn't care about and you just wanted to you know, immediately go into aggression. Now, again, I understand why Chloe is upset. I don't want anyone to watch this video and think I don't understand that. I 1000% understand why Chloe is upset. I completely get how she could be heartbroken over this. But at the end of the day, I want people to understand that Chloe is not the only person in this entire world that is going through things like that. On top of that, they are not the people that have not shacked up this karma if you will i feel this is all karma and if people could step back and see how that karma could possibly be coming to them it'd be a lot easier for things to just kind of be rolled off of the tongue another thing i just want to touch on is when chloe was drunk and they called chris jenner and chloe calls chris jenner oprah there is literally nothing I have to say about that other than that being hilarious, period. I have nothing else to say. I thought it was funny. I literally was chuckling when I watched that part. And I was like, okay, Chloe, I, I see you're getting your sense of humor back. That's what I'd like to see. Good job. Because at the end of the day, Chloe was one of the most likable Kardashians. And for me, I, I want her to get back there. But I think the whole being perfect has just really gone to her head. Being the right size has gone to her head. Having a child at the right age has gone to her head. Because I don't understand why any of this was necessary. Her whole relationship with Tristan was, for me, not necessary. In this episode, Jada called Chris. Okay, so Jada Smith called Chris Jenner 
And for some reason, I just thought it was interesting that Kris Jenner didn't say a word of it until the news broke out. Did not immediately call or text Chloe, Tristan, Kim, Penelope. I don't even care. I'm, I'm surprised that she did not contact anyone after Jada texted her at night, supposedly before or after her flight. Because if Chris didn't do that, in the aspect of her own family, which is why Chloe was so upset in the car, then why are we so upset that Jordan didn't do that? You do you see the double standards? I don't understand. It's 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 very pick or choosy and I don't really get why that is. I want to really throw a huge kudos to Kim Kardashian. And this is because Kim Kardashian put Larsa Pimpin in her place. And I was very happy to see that they put that in the episode because I think a lot of people are are, are kind of not for Larsa because of this situation. I think if she just shut up and didn't say so much, we would have all just been like, oh yeah, that's Kim's friend. She probably has opinions that we don't know. Whatever. Whatever the situation was, it's, it's messy. It's messy. You're grown. I think the woman is 45, something like that. You're a grown woman. It just didn't make sense to me. So when I saw Kim say that, you know, she texted Larsa and she basically was just saying like you're not making us look good you're not making us look right I really was just like kudos finally put your people in check because I'm confused on why these people are even speaking now when Chloe found out about the red table talk because the fact that she was going buck wild really validates my own buck wildness because I also was going buck wild <laughs> I mean I, I'm pretty sure everyone saw that interview but the fact that Chloe was in the car looking like no one should look at me, no one should talk to me, I'm upset, this is not okay, it was hilarious. And I'm going to tell you why it was hilarious to me. Because one, these are people who do not think that regular people or anybody of that fact will, will go against them. And the fact that Jordan did is honorable, period. I don't care if she's purple, black, uh, green, Yellow, I don't care her skin color. I, I I think that was honorable. If anything, Chloe is making my point. Here is a couple quotes of what she said in the car. One, did Jada give anyone a heads up? When I heard that, I immediately just was like, and there's the entitlement that we're all looking for. You know, <laughs> there's the manipulation that we all know that you guys have. Because why should anyone give anyone a heads up? when it's her own platform. But you see how the Kardashians assume and and kind of dictate this this need of, you know, you must tell us like they're the government or something like that. I don't know what that is about them. And the fact that she couldn't really fight that battle, she immediately went into who do they think they are? Quote, she literally said, who do they think they are? Jordan is somebody who was literally in your household. So basically she is somebody of value regardless i mean regardless of what she did she is somebody of value just because of that snippet of her life and then of course she says look what they're doing to us my family was ruined when she said look what they're doing to us i was very confused look what who is doing to who no one did anything to chloe if anything chloe did something to jordan not woods the other jordan that is where we should all start. That that was the start of the karma that you have now ended in. So I don't understand why Chloe had the audacity to even say that and say it multiple times. When in reality, just like she said, how can anyone be so bluntly public about cheating, especially when the person's nine months pregnant? Right there is when you should have left him. So it's crazy that it took somebody who you saw of no value that was in your domain to make you feel like this is not the right partner for you. Why is it that that, that, that even happened? When in reality, it makes zero sense that you didn't already cut this off from the get period. I don't care, period. Now, let me just stop going in on Chloe because I'm really not trying to go in on Chloe. I just really wish, and if anything, I really hoped that she had a little bit of a, a more clearer mind when it came to what she was doing in this, this whole thing. Because even Kylie can blatantly see that you guys are bullying this girl. So just imagine what the rest of the world is thinking. You know what I mean? At some point, people are going to be like, okay, 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 we get it. 
but th this is not the only person he's cheated with. So, you know, it is what it is. Now, another uh, part I want to talk about here is it was Kendall, Kylie. They were walking down the stairs and I guess they were having a family meeting. And Kendall says, it's a funeral, guys. This is the kind of stuff that you consider a big deal in this family. Whereas other families are thinking about, you know, I don't know how many eggs I'm going to get through this week because I don't get paid on a certain amount of days. Or am I going to be able to pay my rent by the first because I don't get paid until the fifth? We have people with those family issues and then we're sitting here talking about these family issues another thing i really think is really important within this episode probably one of the the biggest things within this episode for me was when chloe was sitting down and they were having their family meeting and she states quote she should have been scared to touch my 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 man End quote. Now, I know I sounded weird saying that. And the reason being is because Chloe literally stuttered when she said this. She stuttered when she said she should have been more scared to touch my, my my man. She literally stuttered. So for me, just hearing that, it's, it, 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 it's, it's comical. Your body is literally rejecting the thought of you assuming and, and reiterating that this person is your man when in, in and in fact this person is everyone's man anybody anybody want if anybody wants a piece you're going to be able to get a piece of tristan that's basically what this man has has shown to the world and projected period there's nothing else you can say about that now the only thing that really bothers me about this whole situation is the way the episode was ended because I think the Kardashians had no clue that people were going to like flip it on Chloe. And I, and Chloe definitely didn't think that it was going to be flipped on her either. But I think if they took the time in that moment and in this episode to understand why that flip even happened, then it would have been more of a growing experience for Chloe. And again, I understand why she's upset, but I really want her to think about how upset the other Jordan was when she was pregnant and Khloe Kardashian. Think about it. If you are a woman and you're listening to my voice right now and you are pregnant and your man, literally your baby father is trawling around the earth with a Kardashian. Let's not even say Khloe. Let's just say a Kardashian. You can even make up the, your own Kardashian in your head. Just think about that. And it's public. Everyone can see it. Every single person can see it. But yet you have no voice because you are not famous. You do not, you're not, you're not it. No one, no one's checking for you. You're, you need to be on bed rest like your doctor told you to, Jordan. That experience for me, period, is more traumatic than the experience that Khloe Kardashian had. I, I'm so sorry. That may sound mean to a lot of people, especially people who love the Kardashians. Do you think Jordan had nannies around the clock when she was going through everything that she was going through with Tristan when Tristan was with Khloe? I doubt it. You know what I'm saying? I doubt it. Like, do you think she was really okay within that period? I don't think so. Whereas Chloe has support, she has money, she has all these other things. So I feel like, yes, I can sympathize for her. But at the end of the day, there are other people that they have hurt and stepped on that had it way worse than them. And they have still not acknowledged that. So for me, I can't have all of my sympathy and my heart to Khloe Kardashian. As much as I did used to love her, it just sucks that this is the situation that kind of ended her character, at least for me, morally speaking. Now, other than that, guys, this was an episode filled with a lot of details, a lot of different things, a lot of different perspectives I think can be pulled out from this episode for sure. But for me, it was more so like closing the chapter on the bad and opening for the good. Kim literally says, quote, at the end of the episode, get the bad out and let's welcome in the good. But at the same time, why are they making it seem like the bad was Jordan when the bad was Tristan? I wish that there was more focus towards Tristan than Jordan. Other than that, guys, I am absolutely done talking about the Kardashians and I'm so glad that we are getting a break. At least I'm hoping. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. If you did make it all the way to the end of this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts or comments about this whole situation, definitely let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys have a beautiful day, night, wherever you may be, and I will see you in the next video.
拜。